There is a huge game this weekend in Gainesville between the Miami Hurricanes and the Florida Gators. Billy Napier, hot seat, is really ramping up. He desperately needs this win. Can they get the win? We will discuss this game from the Miami perspective. That's all ahead on this edition of the Stingray Show as we do a deep dive into Miami versus Florida. On this edition of the Stingray Show, let's get things rocking and rolling. Hi, this is Tim Brando with a reminder. Those of you on Tide 100.9, look out. You're about to feel the buzz of Stingray. This is Stephen Ray, a.k.a. Stingray, coming to you live from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I'm Heath Hopkins. I'm here in DeSoto County, Mississippi, right outside of Memphis, Tennessee. You know, Mark, I, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you feel that responsibility to pay it forward and give some kid a chance coming up in the ranks kind of like Tony did for you. Why you think I'm talking to Stingray tonight? <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate no, that. No, I mean, it's look, no. Hey, Stingray, here's the deal. When you get involved with Texas, it's like getting married to a stripper. <laughs> and, and let me explain this. It looks good. It's kind of sexy on, on the surface. Yeah. But then you get the baggage, you get the drama, you get all that eventually comes with it. And that's what you get with Texas. And that's what the Big 12 learned. And Heath, any thoughts on our show moving forward? Hey, to everyone in Tuscaloosa listening here on Tide 100.9. With the Stingray Show, if you don't like it, you better learn to love it. Because it's the best show going today, baby. Woo! Welcome back inside the Sting Ray Show. Hope all is well with you. And now we are about to get to another huge matchup this weekend down in Gainesville, Florida, as Billy Napier and Florida welcome in Mario Cristobal and the Miami Hurricanes. Miami returns 12 starters from a year ago. And in order to break this game down from the Miami perspective, we are about to be joined by Justice Sandal of Canes Central, which is uh, out of Sports Illustrated. So, ladies and gentlemen, please help us welcome to the Stingray Show Justice to do a deep dive into Miami going to Gainesville, Florida. Justice, how are you doing just a couple of days from the big game there in Gainesville? We got a lot of excitement, a lot of a bit of nervousness too, but we're doing good going into the game. So how are y'all doing? Doing oh, fantastic. Couldn't so, be happier, right? We're here and happy. Absolutely. So Justice, I do want to ask you because from the Florida perspective, a lot of people are talking about Billy Napier being on the hot seat. What is the talk about Mario Cristobal at Miami? Is the seat getting warm for Mario? I don't think the seat is getting warm. It's a bit warm. Not nothing too crazy because after going, he has a 10 year contract. So the first season wasn't really successful last year. They started out well, but they started to crumble towards the end. If you saw it at that Georgia Tech game, the terrible run call at the end of the game, and then it completely collapsed their season. Going after that, you still had key losses against Florida State and Louisville, but those were all by one score. Uh, Louisville was 27 to uh, 20, if my memory serves correct, and I think Florida State was around the same vein. So hot seat is a – is a quote unquote hot seat, not to the level of Billy Napier, because right. B- Billy has to change that whole program around right here, right now. And this is one of the biggest games of his career coming into this Miami game for what Miami needs to do this season. I think all they have to do is win the ACC, especially after what Florida State just did, losing to Georgia Tech. I think this uh, the ACC is wide open and I think Mario Cristobal is perfectly fine. With going on with Miami, with the whole program and, you know, the seat kind of being warm for Mario Cristobal, but that, the shocker, and I'll chase this rabbit real quick. Tom Luganbill was on our show a year ago. Tom joins us all the time. But I remember a year ago, right before we started the season, I said, hey, Tom, if Nick Saban steps out this year, who's the first person they called? He goes, Mario Cristobal. He goes, I think he gets the first call. He didn't get the first call. I don't think he got a call at all. Uh, but with that, looking at this Miami team coming into this season, What's the one thing they have to address and do different than what they did last year on offense or defense or both? 
I think that managing the clock and being able to manage the players, I think that was the biggest thing last season. Mario Cristobal just had his first press conference yesterday. He said that he has a time management coach now. I don't know how you end up having that happen because if you're, in my opinion, if you're a head coach, you should already know how to do all that. But sometimes you get lost in the, lost in the game, so you need somebody beside you to be able to control and help with those type of things. So they have a new time management coach, and I think that's the biggest thing that that will help. I think that also good quarterback play. Tyler Van Dyke was a good quarterback towards the beginning of the season, but he kept throwing bad ball after bad ball, and it cost many games for the Hurricanes. With Cam Ward coming in as one of the best quarterbacks, at the number one quarterback in the transfer portal coming in and being one of the best quarterbacks in the country, I think that'll aid a lot of different things. I think another big thing is the return of many defensive players on the defensive line. Last season, Lance Gildry had to change up the defensive line because of all the injuries that they had on the defensive line. He switched to a 3-3-5 stack, if my memory serves correct, uh, but he likes to rush four. He couldn't rush four because of the lack of depth that he had in the defensive line. Now there's endless names on the defensive line. I think that's what's going to help him a lot. Interesting. With the new era of college football, It just seems, for whatever reason, that time has passed the Miami Hurricanes by and they just can't get back to what they once had back in the day. Justice, you cover this team. Why do you think that they are not, you know, playing at at the level that they once were? I think that it was just the amount of talent and who was running – the entire thing going on at that point in time. Many different head coaches, many different types of players. I think that this is the best roster that they've had in the past 15, 20-ish years. From top to bottom, Mm -hmm. all Americans, all conference players, even some Heisman uh, Heisman talks for Cam Ward. You have different running backs that just a litany of running backs that can go in and go out. You have an offensive line that Mario Cristobal has finally been able to build up. It was one of the best last season, but he has three returning starters on that offensive line plus a different transfer and then also a very highly touted freshman in um, Samson Akoka. I believe that's how you say his name. If I, if that last name is very, very confusing. But I think returning with that, all those players, all those talents, I think that this is one of the best seasons for the Hurricanes. Now, they haven't been able to produce over the past couple of seasons with different head coaches and different players. This is the best chance for them to return to that national spotlight and remind people why that they were once a national powerhouse. And with this roster, they can return and do that. You know, looking at the season coming up, what's one thing Miami can do to win their division? I mean, what is the key game? that they can lock down the division and make a run this year? Now, I was going to say the Florida State game. Now it's that Georgia Tech game. What Mm -hmm. Georgia Tech was able to prove this past Saturday and what they were able to do, just completely taking Florida State out of the game. Once – one thing about – I was never a believer in DJ Uyunga Alea, and he proved that this past Saturday. So – once you're able to take the run game out of Florida State and you have to force DJU to throw the ball, you can do whatever you want. And that's what Georgia Tech did. Their new defensive coordinator did that, and he was the MVP of the game. The Georgia Tech game, Georgia Tech was the number one rushing attack in the ACC last season. Miami was able to keep them under 100 yards in that game. They doubled all those statistics last game, last season when they faced off against them uh, on the offense, defense, everything that they were able to do, they just did better than Georgia Tech. But simple coaching mistakes and simple uh, just mental errors cost the Hurricanes from winning a lot more games than they did last season. I think that's one of those things that will come up this season, and they'll be able to do that moving forward. Justice, I'm looking at the schedule right now. Miami misses this year. Notre Dame, they Uh don't play Clemson, and they don't play NC State. That is a very easy path for them to get to the ACC championship game now with the question marks surrounding Florida State. Yes. Uh, the biggest games are will be the Florida State game, the Georgia Tech game, and then the Louisville game. Those are the three biggest concerns. Everybody else – You could really say it's a cupcake schedule. You really could. Uh, It's not really very competitive, and it's the easiest path for Mario Cristobal to get to the ACC championship. Even last season, I think that Clemson is the biggest question mark going into this year because after all this, uh, what happened last season with the questionable offensive production and going into this season, if they'll be able to 
in in some semblance improve what they were doing last season, I think that that'll be the biggest thing. I think that even though Miami did beat them last year, they beat them last year with a with a freshman quarterback coming in right. play, and they had a and Ruben Bain Jr. It's a highlight going around right now. He's tossing our uh, offensive lineman on Clemson's offensive line around and just getting to the quarterback. So I think that'll be the biggest thing. But it's the it's a cupcake schedule for Miami. If they don't win at least ten games. It's very questionable why they shouldn't be successful in the way they should be successful. The ACC championship is right there for them for the taking, or at least the conference championship game is right there for them. They All they have to do is get there. So, Justice, we are up against another break, and when we come back, we are going to dive into the game with Florida this weekend. That's on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Stingray Show. We will be right back to continue the breakdown of Miami Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Ferguson of South's Finest Meats, the official sponsor of the Stingray Show, has a message for you. Everything we do here is fresh and custom made, custom to order. You know, I tell people when they come in, you know, if you don't see what you like, ask somebody. You know, we've got the capability to process it, make it. You know, if you want a different blend of hamburger meat, we'll do your brisket blend. We'll do your chuck blend. We'll do your sirloin blend. You know, we do all that right here. We are a butcher shop. It's what we do. So, Please don't be afraid to ask if you don't see what you like. We can make you any size patty you want. We can make you any amount you want. You know, people come and say, well, how many patties come in the box? Well, ma'am, how many would you like in a box? You know, you want 12, we'll put 12. You want 25, we'll put 25. That's just one of the many things that South's Finest Meats has to offer the official butcher shop of the Stingray Show. Welcome back inside the Sting Ray Show. We are doing a deep dive into the Miami versus Florida game this weekend with Justice Sandal. And Justice, before we get to that game, I do want to ask you, because you just recently graduated from Mississippi State, and obviously you are there in Mississippi, you covered the team, if you would, would you please give us your favorite story about the late, great Mike Leach? I think oh, my favorite story, I think it was the one where he was just tossing chairs on the sideline. I don't know if you've seen that <laughs> video going around about him just, all right, you don't want to play, just tossing chairs, tossing chairs, tossing chairs. It was the funniest thing ever. I wasn't covering the team at that point in time, but I was right there in the stands watching it, and it was just funny. You could see the genuine anger in his face, but he's he was a very calming presence almost in a way, so I think that was one of my favorite moments right there. Yes. <laughs> you know, getting back to this game, I want to talk about the Hurricanes. What's one thing you think they can expose on the Gators on offense or defense, um, that Florida's going to really have a problem uh, and struggle with stopping? I think the pass rush of the Miami Hurricanes, they were a top 10 team coming coming into last season doing that, and they exposed and just did so many things with that. I think that Florida has a new offensive line, and they're trying to jail together. I know many talking heads are talking about, oh, Miami's defensive line, this, then, the third. They have to jail together because of all the new transfers and all this and that. Florida has a brand, or not a brand new offensive line, but they are so young in every department that I think that the experience of the Hurricanes will come in and just run over them. I think that Mm -hmm. one of the key things about the Hurricanes is that their secondary is their weakness. I will say that. So you have two senior players and Daryl Porter Jr. and then Misha Powell coming in off the national championship game for for the um, Washington Huskies. You have those two players. You also have a standout uh, freshman, OJ Federica. Uh, I believe that he will see quality starting time and he'll see some playing time coming into the season. But outside of that, it's just freshman, freshman, redshirt, freshman, freshman. It is the lack of depth in that yeah. room and they can get attacked with ease. They were the 55th uh, best passing uh, defense in the country last season compared to how the defense was a top 10, top 20 in the pass rushing department. So I think that'll be one of the key things to watch out for. But I think that they'll be able to get after a quarterback quickly and efficiently. Graham Mertz is entering his sixth season as a quarterback for uh, this as, as a quarterback. So I think that'll be one of the things that you'll have to take a look at. He'll try to get the ball out quick because 
he has very talented players around him, especially in Trey Wilson, who came off that freshman season he had last season coming into this season. He's likely going to get be better. He'll likely get close to a thousand yards and more touchdowns than he had last season. But He'll be a key player to watch out, especially against that secondary. But I think Miami's just going to run him over. Genuinely, the offensive line is fantastic. The litany of running backs that they have back there. And if you don't have that, you have Cam Moore that can just throw bombs down the field to three quality receivers that they have. Xavier Restrepo, Sam Brown, the Houston transfer. And then you even have uh, Jacoby George, one of the best route runners and one of the most underrated players in the ACC. So I think it's a very interesting game, especially when you look at the X's and O's. Wow. If you had to pick one player on each side of the ball to have a great game against Florida. It's just a good matchup for them. You think they're going to be off the charts. Who would you say that is on offense, and who would you say that's on defense? The obvious answer on defense is Reuben Bain Jr., but I think uh, Simeon Barrow Jr. coming in from Michigan State, I think he's going to have an exceptional game. He's very experienced, and I think that Reuben Bain coming off one edge, then you have Tyler Barron also coming from Tennessee coming off the other edge. All those people in the middle, they can have really explosive games, and especially with the weakness of Florida's uh, offensive line. On offense, I want to say Sam Brown. I, I know people will expect Xavier Restrepo working out of the slot and just doing a bunch of different things, especially in open space, but – for all, all things considered for what Florida has, they have a very good secondary, and I think that will be one of the key matchups going into this game. I think that for what Sam Brown brings to the Hurricanes, what they did not have last season, you have that 4-4, four, 4-3 four, four, speed that can just take up, take the top off the defense, and Cam Ward is going to try and get the ball to him as quickly and as fast as possible, just throwing deep, deep bombs, taking the top off. And once, you, once you're once able to take the top off the defense, all those other players come in to – just work in the middle. That's what Xavier Restrepo did well last season, working in those zone coverages. He'll find open space, especially with Jacoby George, too, working on the outside. He's going to get the ball. He's going to make a catch, and they're always going to be open. Tyler Van Dyke couldn't get them the ball the way that I believe that Cam Ward will be able to get them the ball. So, Justice, I do want to ask you, go ahead and give us your prediction on the Gators and the Hurricanes from Gainesville on Saturday. I think – it's going to be a very raucous environment. It's the first game of the season. A lot of expectations yeah. on both sides. I think Miami, of course, I think Miami is going to come out on top. I think it'll be a close game up until the end. I'm thinking 31-24 in favor of Miami. I think Cam Ward's going to have an exceptional game. I don't think – I think that they'll try and take the swamp out early. That's the goal. Right. That's the plan. You have to take them out. And if you don't, it's going to be very miserable. It's already hot as it can be there. That humidity is going to be in the middle of the day. It's already going to be hot. The sun's beaming down. 90,000 people just screaming at you. Once they take the swamp out early, I think that they'll just control the rest of the game. His name is Justice Sandal. He covers the Hurricanes of Miami. Get to know his, wor uh, his work. He is going places. Justice, will you be there for the game with the Gators and Hurricanes uh, this week? I will not be there. I, I, it's a missed opportunity that I wish I could be there for. Just some traveling conflicts that wouldn't allow me to get there. But we're going to try and get to some of the rest of the games this season. Hey, hey, I heard on the radio this morning, the most. this is the most traveled Labor Day they've had in 17 years. Blew my mind when I heard that. I said, expect a lot of delays in airports. So maybe you'll be happy watching this one at home like the rest of us. Yeah. Justice, your final thoughts on the Hurricanes this season? I think it'll be a, a great season for the Hurricanes. The ACC is wide open now for them. I think that they'll be able to get there and they'll be able to attack. It's year three for Mario Cristobal. If, you, if you've seen his programs over the last couple of seasons when he was at Oregon or FIU, year three, year four is when he starts to actually elevate. He has his players in. He has his talent in that he's been recruiting. And I think that I think this season will be a, a testament of him able, being able to recruit his homecoming to Miami and him pushing forward. So, Justice, before we let you go, I do want to get your take on one thing. Okay. California and Stanford coming into the ACC, with them being from the Pacific Coast, your thoughts on that odd pairing of Stanford and Cal in the ACC. Okay. It's Stanford, Cal, and then SMU, too. SMU uh, yeah. has also came in. So, I would say – Outside of football, it's great. You have your soccers, you have your swimmings, you have all those other high-level competitive sports that they're good in. I think that's great for the ACC. The traveling is going to suck on both sides. Yeah. Back and forth, <laughs> they're 
across the country. That's that's terrible. I don't know why they're doing that. I don't. I think realignment's coming anyway. Of, of just mass realignment sooner or later, since everybody wants to leave Florida State and Clemson want to leave, and then now other people are joining the Big Twelve and the Big Ten and the SEC. I think mass realignment is coming within the next couple of years anyway to get everything back in order. But that travel back and forth it's going to be horrendous on players. And I and I think it'll be seen, especially because Miami travels out to Cal to play them yeah. this season too. So it's 50-50. It's good and bad. It's program-wise, programs and athletic-wise, I think it's a great thing. for. But on the players and just all the cost coverages and everything, I think it's kind of 50-50. So, Justice, look, man, thank you as always for taking time to join us. Go ahead and let everybody know where they can follow you and keep up with you on social media, please. Absolutely. So Twitter is justice underscore news five. You can follow and read most of my stuff on Miami Hurricanes on SI. Have many different stories. We cover baseball, basketball, football, everything that you can imagine. Um, We also have a YouTube channel, uh, Miami Hurricanes on SI. different shows, different things like that. And we also have an Instagram that we just started to, to try and get more word out there about what we're doing is also Miami Hurricanes on SI. So, yeah. So Justice, we will definitely catch up with you during the season and enjoy the Florida Miami game on Saturday. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Justice, take care. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to put a wrap on the Stingray Show. When we come back on the Friday evening edition of the Stingray Show, we are going to be talking about the matchup between Texas A&M and Notre Dame. We are going to hear this from the Notre Dame perspective of Pete Sampson, who is a beat writer for The Athletic, who covers Notre Dame. And then we are going to talk with our good friend Olin Buchanan to break it down from the A&M side of things. Have a wonderful Friday out there, and we will catch you right back here, 6 p.m. for the Friday evening edition of the Stingray Show, talking about the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame traveling to College Station.